the president. Good morning, Mr. Nunchi. You may speak now. Nunchi, during the last few days, even if the court is not in session, my health is still not that great. I feel the dizziness. However, I'll try my best to fulfill my duty before the chamber. And I would seek your permission to rest when the time comes and I could not continue. Thank you, Mr. President. The President, thank you, Mr. Nonji, for notifying the chamber. You are also reminded that the chamber will continue questioning you for only the morning session. And in the afternoon session, the chamber will commence questioning Mr. Ying Sari and Kiel Samporn. We do take into consideration your health condition for this arrangement. Of course, we do face difficulty and we observe the difficulty when the security guard uh, bring the accused to the dock. I think you should make the arrangement for the accused to sit in the wheelchair so that it can be pushed easier than let uh, him walk. I would like now to give the floor to Judge Cartwright to continue her questioning of the accused. You may take the floor now. Thank you, President. Nguyen Chia, last week on the 6th of November, you gave a, a very helpful, detailed analysis of the development of Communist Party of Kampuchea strategy. I will just summarize two or three of your, point, your points before asking you a further question about this. You told the Chamber that at the request of Tu Samut, you and Pol Pot spent four to five years between 1955 and 1959 discussing and developing strategy. You also told us that this meant you analyzed the status of the people of Cambodia and found that peasants from the rural areas were oppressed by feudalists and, and colonialists. As the result of your analysis, it was decided that a national revolution was essential to combat against the influence of capitalists and to combat foreign interference. Now, can I just ask you to confirm that that whole policy, strategic and tactical lines, was discussed at the First Party General Assembly? Is that what you told the court last week? Response. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. Let me clarify my statements that I made at that time. I said the true nature of the Cambodian society is half colonial, half feudalism. Therefore, 
the test of the revolution of the democratic Kampuchi at that time is to eliminate the remnants of the half colonialism, half feudalism, and to oppose and resist the half capitalism. It means to liberate the nation and the people to liberate the nation means to eliminate the remnants of the colonialism, colonialism at that time and to gradually eliminate the feudalist however that is not to eliminate the capitalist because we are not the socialist revolution we are the democratic revolution which means to liberate the poor peasants those who do not own any piece of land so that li their livelihood could be improved and they could have enough food to eat and clothes to wear. In practice, it means to reduce the rental fee for the land and the fee for the money loaned so that the peasants could have sufficient food to eat. So these are the two distinct tasks that we were to carry out and I'd like to make sure that you are clear on this. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for clarifying that. My question is, was your strategic and tactical line discussed at the first party general assembly uh, which was held in September of 1960. <clears throat> Response. The strategic and tactical lines were done from the ground level to the upper level. The issues could be raised at the branch level at the commune so that they could discuss and analyze the situations in details. After the discussion on those matters, it could then be submitted to the district committee and from that discussion from the district committee, it was sent to the sector level, the sector committee, so that we practice the centralized democracy from the ground level to the upper level. One of the suggestions have been made, the central party would examine the issues and then the General Assembly was held in order to adopt the strategic and tactical lines as an official one. So not only a group of people adopted the strategy and tactical lines, but it was the result of the benefit from the ground level up. Yes, thank you. I, I now clearly understand how strategic and tactical lines were discussed and finally uh, put before the first Congress of the party in September of 1960. Now, last week you said that 
a national, uh, it was decided that a national revolution was essential. Uh, I want to ask you how a national revolution was to be conducted and was it to include armed struggle? Response. I'd like to make the following comments. That was a stage of the political struggle. It was not yet a political and armed struggle. The political and armed struggle commenced only in 1968. From my recollection, if I am not mistaken, the period of 1960 up to 1966 or 67 was still a period of democratic revolution. This means we get rid of the remnants of the colonialists who oppressed the people. There were still remnants of those groups. As well as to get rid of the the power of the feudalist. The movement was done together to get rid of these two groups. It's, it commenced at the same time, which comes under one banner that is the democratic revolution, which is the key to transform the livelihood of the people which is an essential part of the strategy. Thank you. In the Revolutionary Flag magazine, issue 8, August 1975, with the document number D243-2.1, there is a, a lengthy part that deals with the history of the building of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea under the leadership of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Uh, that is found in the um, Khmer ER uh, at page uh, the ERN number zero 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 six three three two eight uh, English uh, ERN zero zero five three eight nine six six uh, and French uh, I I'm sorry that was the French number the English number is zero zero four zero one four nine one. Now, I just want to ask you about some comments in this section. First, the magazine says the strategic and tactical lines of the Communist Party of Kampuchea were clearly and fundamentally correctly drawn up in 1960 during the First Party General Assembly, even though it is true that our party was created in 1951. The magazine then went on to say, Carders working in the various cities such as Phnom Penh gradually set up and organized our revolutionary army. And goes on to say, we chose a name for the army appropriate 
to those circumstances. There were many names, but one name that I still remember was Secret Defence Unit. Now my question to you is, do you recall those discussions and the use of that name Secret Defence Unit for the beginning of the Revolutionary Army? A response. I would like your honor to ask me in short sentences so that I could recall and respond well. The matter has been so long already. Could you please make your question brief on one topic at a time? Otherwise, I would not uh, be able to provide full answers to all your questions. Well, I'll make the matter brief. Was the Revolutionary Army originally called the Secret Defence Unit? Response. Uh, Your Honor, at that time, those people in authority, that is the lunar clique, they oppressed the people, the peasants, at their own pleasure. They arrested and detained the cadres without any reasons given. After the Geneva Convention and until the year that you just mentioned, we reviewed the situation and if we allowed the authority in power to continue that barbarous act against the revolutionary force, in particular, the poor peasants, the party would be resolved and disappeared because we do not have the means to resist them. We only have our bare hands. For that reason, we decided to do the political struggle However, it was not already the time for the armed struggle. And as you stated, we needed to have the secret defense unit recruited from the children of the peasants in order to defend and to escort the cadres who mobilized from one village to another to do their task. Otherwise, the soldiers, the police, and the commune chiefs would arrest them at their own will. This, this secret defense unit did not have any weapon. They only had sticks. However, the carrying of the sticks were legitimate. Their tasks were to escort the cadres on mission and they were not yet the army. They were still the defense unit. Did the secret defense units also have a further responsibility to covertly smash the enemy as is stated in that part of the Revolutionary Flag magazine that I have just referred to. Response. The Secret Defense Unit did not have the duty to kill or to smash. 
Their duty was to defend the cadres. So that maintaining secrecy is essential. However, they also have to have weapons to defend themselves. Otherwise, we will be at the mercy of the enemy. The weapons that I referred to were just those sticks that I mentioned earlier, the sticks or the knives or the axes, as those were possessed by the peasants. And their main task was to escort the cadres. They did not have any task of making the arrest or to kill anybody. But in the case of necessity, that is when the cadre is attacked or is detained, this defense unit must protect the cadre at their best ability. Thank you. Can I just read you a, a short passage from the Revolutionary uh, Flag magazine? when it is talking about the secret defense units. It says this, the mission of the secret defense unit was to defend the revolution's base areas, to defend the revolution's people, to defend the cadres moving around working, and to defend the assemblies and the various meetings, and in tandem with this, to covertly smash the enemy, the government agents, and the various reactionaries, in order to defend the party, the revolution, and the people. Do you agree with that statement in the Revolutionary Flag magazine? Response. There are two meanings here. The first one is that the secret defense unit did not go and find the spies in order to smash them. However, in the circumstances of the meetings, and there were spies who wanted to arrest the people who participated in the meetings, this defense unit did have the authority to smash those spies. Thank you. Now, I want to move uh, from there to the birth of the Revolutionary Army uh, of Kampuchea. Uh, and uh, reference is found in Revolutionary Flag Magazine, D243 slash 2.0. 1.9 English ERN 00491411 Khmer ERN 00063021 and French 00504033 In that magazine, it states that on the 17th of January 1968, the covert guard units transformed into organized guerrilla units and opened fire for the first time to strike an enemy position at 
at Bay Dumron village, uh, a village that was located about 10 or 11 kilometers above Batambong uh, city. Is that a correct statement to your recollection of that first attack on the 17th of January 1968? Defense, are you referring to the 12th or the 17th? In the Revolutionary Flag magazine, it states the 17th of January 1968. If you wish to correct that date, um, please do so. Response. I'd like to provide on the background of the date so that the information is complete. After the rebellious activities in some load, the Lunol clique sent their army in the hundreds and thousands to suppress the peasants in some load. Some people were beheaded and the heads were stacked to the fence of their houses. It gradually spread. And the suppression became even more serious. The Lunno barbarous clique, including Gu Run, from the police side, were so barbarous. They acted at their own pleasure in killing people. As a result, that the people residing in some lot could not stand anymore, they fled into the Wai Jab mountain. They did not have any food to eat there in order to avoid being arrest, arrested by those cliques. Some other groups of the people there, from my recollection, were the volunteer units organized by the government. The Kong Chief of Pol, or volunteer unit, were those who were children of the poor peasants who were mistreated and killed. And as they could not stand the situation anymore, and without any instruction, they volunteered. And from my recollection, there were a group of seven of them In the morning, they went to the police station in by Damram village and attacked that post. They seized seven weapons. As a result of that event, the armed struggle spread from one location to the next, from the northwest to the southwest. And in the southwest, they confiscated a large number of weapons 
and then it spread to the West. Within a period of one year, there were activities in the 19 provinces of Kampuchea. Activities were actively involved in 17 of the 19 provinces. The movement was not the result of the peasants who became vicious and barbarous. It was the result of the mistreatment by the Lono and the Serimenta and Sengok Thang and Kurun, who caused all those troubles in making the arrest of the people. And it caused by those in power at the time, not at the initiative of the local people. The people only wanted peace, but instead they were not given peace and they had no choice but to resist. And if they did not have any weapon to defend themselves, they would be killed. This is for your information, Your Honor. Thank you, Nguyen Chia, for that um, explanation. In paragraph 24 of the closing order, it is stated that on that date, 17 January 1968, pursuant to orders conveyed by you, CPK forces, attacked the government army post at Bay Damran village. Was this attack mounted on orders given by you? Answer. I would like to read object against this uh, because at that time I was not uh, living in some load. I was living in Tasang village and this movement was voluntary because at that time there was a militia war and I would like to elaborate on this point. What, what constituted the principle of militia war? I had never received any military training but by listening to those uh, who had involved in militia war, they say that uh, the militia men did not listen to the uh, superiors because if they waited for the uh, orders from the superior, they would not seize the opportunity and attack it, or otherwise we would uh, lose the opportunity to attack. And if we uh, did not have the opportunity, we had to create the opportunity uh, by themselves uh, in order to seize uh, weapons. To my knowledge, uh, those militiamen uh, went to uh, war by bringing with them only axes and uh, sticks or so. They did not have uh, guns or arms with them. So uh, they normally attack in order to seize uh, those weapons. At that time, uh, people living in uh, some load uh, uh, seize uh, those uh, weapons, and uh, eventually they uh, see some seven uh, rifles or guns. At that time, they did not even know how to uh, fire the uh, guns uh, at, at that time. So I did not order this attack, and if there was an order, it had to occur at the same times in various places. And if I had ordered it, there would be 
not only seven people, but at least there was one uh, company or or so in order to carry out the attack. And but what I would like to make it uh, precisely clear is that I was not in some load at that time. I was living in Tasang at that time. Thank you. Now that particular attack was later. Uh, made famous as uh, the founding of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea, was it not? Answer. Well, if there was no revolutionary base, then we would be oppressed and suppressed by the enemy. As a result, those volunteer villagers who seize the weapons uh, from the soldiers, they took refuge in the forest. Those who came from the southwestern part of the country uh, went into Prairamil jungle. Along the Kampung Chnang and Kampung Spu uh, border. So they built their stronghold over there, but their life was misery at that time. They had to live without many things, including uh, foods, so they had to went to various villages begging for uh, foods, and they had to cultivate uh, crops uh, for themselves to support uh, themselves. And for your information as well, those militiamen, wherever they went, they brought with them the pumpkin seeds. And wherever they reside, they would uh, plant uh, those uh, pumpkin seeds and they could uh, pick those pumpkins in order to feed themselves. That was, that was all they had to be self-reliant because uh, we at that time knew that uh, farmers or peasants in the remote area were miserably poor. For example, villagers living around Oral Mountain were miserably, miserably poor. My question is, was the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea founded in January of 1968? Answer. The Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea to my recollection, started its uh, functioning on the on the twelfth of of March, if I if my memory serves me well, nineteen sixty eight. And to be honest at that time Vietnam who sought a sanction in uh, who sought a sanctuary in Cambodia, they criticized the uh, leftist movement in Cambodia. They said that the situation was not yet ripe, so armed struggle uh, would not be the best solution at that time. So at that time, Vietnam did not provide any support, but instead uh, they criticized of our uh, movement. In addition to criticisms, uh, they even uh, frightened us. They said, well, 
it was too adventurous for the Communist uh, Party of Cambodia to uh, to conduct armed struggle in this country. That's what they said. And at that time, the uh, party committee did not respond to the uh, Vietnam. And uh, we said uh, we still maintained uh, our uh, position. We had to be independent of Vietnam and we have to take hold of our uh, destiny by ourselves. So Vietnam did not only verbally criticize us, but they actually acted against us as well. For example, even a single arm was not given to, to us. Because our party line diverted. They did not want us uh, to go uh, to carry out um, struggle uh, together with political struggle. That's why when there was a meeting between Central Committee members, the Vietnam counterpart at that time said uh, warn us that uh, we uh, must not uh, carry out armed struggle. And they said uh, we had to wait uh, until Vietnam could uh, gain a victory, then would not, Vietnam would come and help. Uh, that's what they uh, asked us to remember at that time, Nguyen Văn Linh, uh, who mentioned uh, that. And Leijun also echoed uh, this sentiment. They said it was too adventurous for uh, the Communist Party to go um, struggle. But at that time, we did not care uh, with uh, their criticism. Uh, but the Communist Party, Kampuchea, maintained its independence and protect its national sovereignty and territorial integrity. And we uh, maintain our position that we had to own our uh, destiny and whatever Vietnam said, it was their business. That is all, Your Honor. Thank you. Now, it's a very long time ago, so I will just read to you a statement in the same revolutionary flag magazine D243-2.1.9 English ERN 0049106 Khmer ERN 0063015 and French 0050427 and this statement says, 18 January 1977 is the date of the celebration of the ninth anniversary of the founding of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea. So do you agree that the Revolutionary Army's founding was always celebrated on the 17th or 18th of January each year? Answer. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I do not remember because there were many events. The next matter that I would like to ask you about is how the Revolutionary Army uh, was uh, funded. You have said that in its early days, when the secret defense units were forming, that the Kada had only sticks and axes and simple implements like that. Uh, and uh, we know that after the attack on Bay Damran village, some weapons were uh, acquired. But in order to uh, equip 
the revolutionary army of Kampuchea, you must have got financing from somewhere. Can you explain how that developed? Answer. To the best of my recollection, the founding date of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea was on the 12th of January 1968. It was the founding date of revolutionary movement. As for the financial support, actually the fund was uh, provided by the party members. Party members contribute on a monthly basis of approximately one real. So each month they contribute one real. And the members of this revolutionary armies are the uh, people's children. So uh, they receive support from their uh, families. But of course, they did not have a uh, surplus of uh, food. But as you may uh, understand that in Cambodia there was a lot of forests and in the forest there were a lot of wild animals and and birds then we could uh, you know use those animals or birds as, as food and we use uh, traps in order to catch those animals we use other rudimentary uh, tools in order to catch those animals so once we Coach those uh, animals, we cook them. And as for uh, rice, uh, we normally butter uh, meat uh, from the uh, wild animals uh, for rice in order to get some rice to, to, to feed uh, themselves. Well, during the long period that you were working secretly to uh, develop the strategic and tactical lines of the party, uh, and you were also moving around the countryside to meet with Pol Pot and Yang Sari and other uh, figures in the movement, how did you support yourself? Answer. Purport and Inksory rarely went down to the base. The original uh, base was actually set up in Ratanakiri in the, east, the uh, northeastern part of the country. And I at that time resided in Phnom Penh. And I was responsible for overseeing the operation at the uh, zones. But I, I, do, I do not really catch your question, Your Honours. I, I have forgotten what you want to ask. Answer. The actually the uh, the uh, base, the revolutionary base actually supported me. I had nothing. I live on the support of others. 
I went to visit other people's houses, and they uh, cooked uh, food for me. And they actually offer me whatever they had. Uh, they offer me salt, but at that time we had salt as one of the staple food uh, for us. And whenever I live uh, with the people's family, they tried uh, to hide me. They did not. Let any other people know that I was there. Sometimes their kids were crying because they were hungry, and then uh, those villagers said uh, they would cook porridge uh, for the kids, and they would save some rice in order to prepare uh, for for me. And at that time, fruits, the local fruits, uh, were sufficient. There were various different kinds of uh, domestic as well as uh, wild uh, fruits. But if I came to uh, somewhere in Kampung Cham province, uh, there were sufficient food. But when I went to somewhere around Oral Mountain or some load, uh, people did not have uh, sufficient food. At that time, we ate uh, cassava or potatoes. We actually add uh, different kinds of potatoes. This was our step for food back then. Well, returning to the revolutionary army of Kampuchea, from those very early beginnings in 1968, it gradually developed into a proper army by the time uh, the uh, uh, the army entered Phnom Penh on the 17th of April 1975. How did you acquire the weapons and other equipment needed for an army of that size? Your Honor, at that time we did not have enough weapons. China, of course, did uh, supply some arms, but uh, Vietnam was responsible for transporting those arms. and they take one third of it. And in addition, they had actually transported those arms, but they did not hand it over to us. They um, make an excuse that uh, they had uh, confused or there was any irregularities or so at that time. So uh, we had to uh, uh, we had to look for weapons by ourselves. So that was the trick of Vietnam. When in war, Vietnam uh, brought along with them uh, children at the age of 14 or 15. And they uh, creep and crawl uh, uh, behind them and once and once we uh, could seize uh, the weapons uh, the uh, Vietnamese uh, toddlers would um, pull the leg of the uh, Cambodian armies so that they could not uh, seize the weapons And actually, uh, we agreed uh, 
at first uh, that what once we could uh, seize weapons we would uh, divide it by two equally but unfortunately that was not the case because Vietnam would uh, seize the weapons and uh, pile it in their own warehouse Vietnam uh, promised uh, that uh, they would actually share uh, the uh, weapons uh, ceased, but unfortunately they did not uh, live up to their words. For example, there was a, a battle somewhere in Craig, and we uh, seized a number of um, rocket uh, propellers and artilleries. And then the Vietnamese uh, soldiers uh, told us that, well, uh, once you seized uh, those artilleries, uh, you sh should uh, leave uh, those artilleries with us. We would uh, keep uh, them for you for later use. Then I was wondering, how could they uh, keep artillery for us if they sought a sanctuary uh, in our territory? So my understanding was that uh, they did not want us to possess any artilleries or weapons at all. They did not want us to be independent. Uh, they want to dominate uh, us. So that was the true nature of the uh, Vietnamese uh, soldiers at that time. And that was not all. They looted one classic example was that uh, the oil which was supplied by um, China somewhere in Ratanakiri and Vietnam at that time uh, cheated uh, China. They said that where they were residing uh, belongs to uh, Vietnam. And at that time, Pol Pot uh, told the Chinese counterpart that, well, uh, that land uh, did not belong to Vietnam. Actually, Vietnam sought a uh, sanctuary on our land. And, and actually, the oil that was supplied uh, by China was received only by the Vietnamese. The Cambodian uh, did not receive any gasoline supply by them. It was actually um, rather difficult to uh, describe or to put it into words because it was beyond what I could describe because they sought sanctuary in Cambodia. They sent their troops from northern Vietnam to attack uh, the uh, opposing force in South Vietnam. If they sent 100 uh, soldiers, uh, only 20 of them uh, could be healthy enough uh, to go to war. 80 of them uh, were sick because they were starving, uh, so they had to rely on Cambodian to support them, uh, food as well as uh, medical support. And they actually live on bananas, uh, fruits uh, from people planting uh, in uh, Ratanakiri province. I think that some people believe that Cambodian, uh, Cambodians should uh, express their gratitude uh, to Vietnam. Uh, but actually, I would like to make it clear that uh, Vietnam should pay gratitude to Cambodia because Vietnam sought sanctuary in Cambodia. You remember that when there was a carpet bomb of the U.S. along uh, in South Vietnam, they had to come and seek a refuge in Cambodia. And they came to uh, talk uh, with uh, Sao Pem asking for a uh, sanctuary. And I, uh, they did not come and talk to me, actually. But once they returned, I talked to Sao Pem of uh, what they uh, came for. And they said that they came to seek a uh, sanctuary in our territory because they could not return to their country because uh, their country was being bombarded by the U.S. And I report this uh, to Nguyen Van Lynch, and Nguyen Van Lynch told me that later on you did not have to bother with that uh, business. Let them uh, find a, a 
place or sanctuary by themselves. And I did not understand the motive of uh, his uh, comments. Actually, there has been a lot of stories uh, concerning with uh, Vietnam's involvement in Cambodia. And that is the truth of the history. And I believe that this court wants to find not only justice, but the truth. And that is the truth of the history. And my response to your question now is to uh, make it clear uh, that the who our enemies are and how our friends are, and it's going to be useful for uh, for the younger generation. And who is indebted to whom? Remember that when the uh, North Vietnamese soldier came to uh, Cambodia, at that time uh, they did not have anything, not even food uh, to eat, so they had to rely on Cambodia to support them. Some. 50,000 soldiers uh, stationed uh, along Cambodian uh, Vietnamese border on Cambodian territory. Those who did not know the history, they uh, would be wrong in their uh, perception. Actually, uh, Cambodian was not indebted to Vietnam, but instead uh, Vietnam was indebted to Cambodia because they had to seek a safe sanctuary in Cambodian territory, because at that time it was a carpet bombing by the U.S., and they had nowhere uh, to reside but Cambodian territory. So I would like to make this clear, and I hope that I have revealed it uh, to Cambodian people, because I strongly believe that uh, many, uh, some people in, in Cambodia uh, believe that Cambodia was indebted to uh, Vietnam. And they actually uh, made it, uh, you know, in words, uh, and they made it known to the world uh, that uh, Cambodia was liberated by Vietnam, Vietnam has saved Cambodia, and so on and so forth. But actually, uh, it was another way around. Because without the uh, Cambodian support, the Vietnamese soldiers would have no place to stay and to stand. That is all for me, Your Honours. Thank you. Uh, before I finish um, putting questions to you, Nguyen Chia, on the um, historical uh, background, uh, I just want to go back to one or two of the matters we discussed last week. Uh, about the development of um, strategic and tactical lines. I asked you last week uh, if um, during the time that you and Tu Samut were discussing the strategic and tactical lines, uh, did you also discuss the development of a statute adopted by the General Congress in 1960. You were a little unsure about when it was adopted, but I'd just like you to look at um, the uh, document that uh, I'm now going to um, ask the court officials to give to you. This is the Communist Party of Kampuchea Statute D366-7.1.1. Now that's a copy in the Khmer language. And I just want you to look at that and uh, if you are able to do so, confirm that that was the statute of 30 articles that you referred to last week.
response from my recollection the statute so composed of eight chapters and there shall be 30 articles and the uh, the document before me consists only 29 articles not 30 So once again, there shall be eight chapters of 30 articles of this statute. Well, I wonder if I can just clarify that the Khmer version that uh, Nguyen Chia has in front of him uh, is uh, incomplete because the English version indeed has eight chapters and 30 articles. Could you go to the end of the document that's currently showing on the court officer's screen and uh, see if there is another page? Microphone for Nguyen Chia, please. Mr. Nguyen Chia, the microphone was off when you made your last comments. Do you wish to speak now that it's on? Response. I could not read the text on the screen. Could the court officer just check Mr. Nguyen Chia's copy to make sure that final page, which appears to have a chapter 8 on it, is uh, part of his document, please? Response. Yes, there is an article 30 in Chapter 8. Thank you. Now, one or two more matters. Last week, we discussed the development of the communist movement uh, in uh, Cambodia, which culminated with the renaming of the Workers' Party as the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Is it correct that you did not announce this uh, new name until several years later? That is, you did not announce publicly that the Communist Party of Kampuchea had been formed. Response. Jonas, it is not I alone either to declare and to make it official. It depends on the standing committee with Pol Pot as the, as the secretary. And the reason why Pol Pot did not make the official announcement is due to the situation. 
the situation at the time was not yet appropriate for the Communist, Communist Party of Kampuji to make its presence known officially. And in fact, uh, in the um, revolutionary flag special issue of September 1977, D243-2.1.12, uh, English ERN 00486215, Khmer 00063120 and French 00492799 was an announcement made that the party has decided to publicly and officially announce the Communist Party of Kampuchea to the country and the world. Do you recall that occasion? Response, I could not fully understand your question. Could you please ask me again? Was the uh, was an, a, a public and official announcement made of the formation of the Communist Party of Kampuchea to the country and to the world uh, some uh, 17 years after the founding of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Do you recall that? Response. The event uh, occurred long time ago. However, the main reason for the party not to make an official or public announcement, the party was still in its small scale and it was still developing itself in the struggle movement it was still expanding itself to make an orderly structure within the party. And if a public announcement was made, there could be consequences which were not beneficial to the party. The party would make the announcement once it has had a proper structure with the support from the masses. And the support from overseas, then it will be right for the party to make the announcement. At that time, Pol Pot made his trip abroad, for example, to Vietnam, to China, in order to make familiar to them the strategic and technical lines of the party, that is the Communist Party of Kampuchea. The purpose of his trips, let me say, Pol Pot, upon his return, informed us that the Communist Party of Vietnam was not happy with us, that we did not seek their advice on the establishment of the statute of the party, for instance. However, the Communist Party of China said that the making of our lines was appropriate based on the analysis of the social strata. This And from that event, the Communist Party of Cambodia was in a position to liaise with other Communist parties around the world, for example, in China and in Thailand and a number of other countries. 
they actually invited us to meet with them in order to exchange our experiences and to learn from one another regarding the lines of our party and theirs. So then our party was gradually known in the international stage. Finally, I want to ask you, Nguyen Chia, uh, if you recall when the decision to evacuate Phnom Penh was made. Response. From my recollection, the decision to evacuate the dwellers in Phnom Penh was done through a series of meetings starting from 1973. The situation was analyzed and at that time it was considered that the America decided to suspend their aid to Cambodia and America used their bombers to bombard Cambodia. The CPK made an analysis that if the America sees their bombardment in Cambodia, we would have the ability to win in a short term because they purport the lunar soldiers and the Sarimanta was at a weaker stage. They were weaker, so we saw strive to attack them and to gain victory before the victory gained in Vietnam. If Vietnam gained their victory before us, they would then come to control Cambodia. And upon such an agreement, a decision was made on the 1st January 1975 as the day of the commencement of the final attack against Phnom Penh. You spoke of a series of meetings uh, leading up to this decision on the 1st of January. Were these meetings of the party's central committee? No. Response. From my recollection, the meetings at the central committee was were an extraordinary ones when they they also held a meeting to make that decision in an extraordinary session they decided to choose that date for the final attack in 1975 the party central committee instructed the CPK delegation including Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, to go for negotiation with Nguyen Wan Linh to inform them the plan to liberate the Phnom, the Phnom Penh in our final attack so that Vietnam would need to give us the weapons given to us by China that they kept for quite a long time ago. And we asked them to deliver us certain truckloads of those weaponry. So we discussed and negotiated with Nguyen Van Lint and Nguyen Van Lint consented to that request. The types of weapons and were given to us, delivered to us in a village opposite the Chlong area. 
that is opposite the glass factory in Chalong. I discussed with Paul Port that if the certain tracks were placed in one location, it might be possible for a bomber to drop bombs. One day after I made that speech, three planes came and dropped bombs, destroying the weapons in those tracks. One bomb even exploded in the glass factory. The weapons were completely destroyed. Regardless, the Revolutionary Army of Cambodia continued with their struggle. until they gained a victory from one to another. I do not have any idea as whether it was the spy or the Vietnamese agent who told the Lunar Authority to pinpoint our location for the bombardment. And those who went to receive the ammunition and weaponry was from the north, that is Comrade Paul. After the Geneva Con Convention in 1954, he went to study in the north of Vietnam. Actually, he went to study there for 16 years, and upon his return, he was tasked with maintaining a warehouse for ammunition and weapon. He was the core person in liaison with the Vietnamese. So this is an event regarding the certain track load of weapons that were completely destroyed by the American bombardment. And are you able to confirm that you and Pot participated in the Central Committee meetings, uh, including the extraordinary meeting when the decision was made uh, to evacuate Phnom Penh. Response. Yes, there was a meeting. The situation regarding the Phnom Penh was in a dire consequence. People were starving since 1972. There was no more food storage or food reserved. There were incidents, riots. As many people were unemployed, there were many beggars. Soldiers did not receive their salary. And Lunol could not control the situation. And people did not have any food to eat. As far as I know, and based on the report, of our people in Phnom Penh, many young children died as a result of starvation. And based on the analysis of such situation, the CPK formed a view that while Vietnam was striving to liberate uh, Pri No Go in their own plan and strategy, that they initially had the plan to liberate Pranoko in 1956. We, we shall also have to liberate Phnom Penh in 1956 or even before that, that is 1955. And if Vietnam liberated before us, they would deploy their soldier under the guise of assisting us in Phnom Penh and then controlled us. 
That is the first main reason. The second main reason is that if Phnom Penh were to be liberated, the lunar soldiers, the soldiers belonging to Seung Ngoc Thanh, and those who were like the vagabonds, who only were the players, womanizers, or heavy drinkers, what shall we deal with them? It will be difficult. So that is the second reason. And for the third reason, we, as we were at the countryside, we did not have abundance of food or materials. However, if we compare our livelihood there with the people in living in Phnom Penh, and there were about 3 million of them, we were better because we lived in cooperatives, we helped one another. Then we decided that we had to evacuate the residents in Phnom Penh temporarily. And then we would see what the situation unfolded. How the liberation in Vietnam was going, and whether the Americans still wanted to play, to have their hand in this affair. So in order to prevent the further loss of the lives of people, we needed to evacuate the people to various provinces and cooperatives so that they would have food to eat. And then, during the meeting at the zone committees, we discussed how many zones could take in the number of Phnom Penh residents to be evacuated. From my recollection, the northwest zone has reached Seoul and they could afford to take more Pour residents. I think 1.5 million people were offered to be taken to the northwest. Donc the southwest zone also offered to take more people, and for those zones gens. with small piece of land or the barren land, they only offer to take terre, uh, limited amount fertile, of the Phnom Penh residents. People living in Phnom Penh did not engage in hard labor. When they came, they joined hands with the local residents to share food and to learn from the cooperatives in order to transform those who did not do any hard work to be able to become a laborer. Those newly evacuated people of course, Ces gens could not do as évacués, much work as the local people as they did not do that in the past. Locale, so they were only tasked to do moderate work. Leur tâche était de se and the food ration is also different. They également could eat three times a day in the morning, gruel, for Le lunch, they would have cooked rice, and in the evening, they also would cook, soir, have cooked rice. And once cuit. a week, they would be offered a desert, ils un dessert. temporarily. And then we would see what the Et situation unfolds, how the situation. liberation in Vietnam was going, Comment and whether the Americans still wanted Et to play, to have their hand in this affair. Dans la situation. So in order to prevent the further loss of the Pour lives of people, we needed to evacuate humaine, the people il a fallu donc to various provinces and cooperatives so that they would have food to eat. And then during the meeting at the zone 
committees, dans les réunions we discuss how many zones zone. could Nous take avons discuté in la the de number of zones Phnom Penh residents to be evacuated. From my recollection, the north-west zone has reached Seoul and they could afford to take more residents. I think 1.5 million, million people were offered to be taken to the northwest. The southwest zone also offered to take more people and for those zones with small piece of land or the barren land, they only offer to take a limited amount of the Phnom Penh residents. People living in Phnom Penh did not engage in hard labor. When they came, they joined hands with the local residents to share food and to learn from the cooperatives in order to transform those who did not do any hard work to be able to become a laborer. Those newly evacuated people of course, Ces gens could not do as évacués, much work as the local people, as they did not do that in the past. Locale, so they were only tasked to, to do moderate work. Leur and the food ration is also modéré, different. La ration they également différente. could eat three times Ils a day in the morning, gruel. Le for lunch, they would have cooked rice, and in the evening, they also would cook, soir, have cooked rice. And once per week, they would be offered a dessert. Ils un dessert. It could be implemented in a number of cooperatives. Cela, ça a However, pu être dans there were still bad elements in Mais some of the cooperatives. Dans certaines they intended to destroy the cooperatives. Il y avait des éléments For example, they destroyed those Par exemple, the utensils. For example, the pots, the les ustensiles, spoons. Les they marmites, destroyed them. They threw them away at the tonle sap. And as a result, in some cooperatives, there were shortages of those Et donc, cutleries. I myself witnessed an event. One day, around 4 a.m., I was on a car to Simrip. I saw flocks of people. J'étais dans un véhicule, je me rendais à asked, Siem Riep, j'ai vu un attroupement, j'ai demandé aux gens morning. où ils allaient si tôt le matin I was told they et on m'a répondu transplant rice. And I asked them why it was so early. They said it, that was the order from the tôt, ils ont dit que tel était superior. L'ordre donné said, par no, le this supérieur. Is not right. However, if I et dit went to a location or a base which was well informed earlier, then they would allow me to see only wealthy, healthy people, contre, not the skinny ones. Quelque part et que ma venue avait été and they would make me a presentation that those healthy people nourri. were members of the cooperatives. Et en and in some locations when they knew that à certains upper endroits, level went to visit, then we were well entertained and provided with food. Certaines personnalités haut placées allaient they venir en visite. They would have chicken and beef Une nourriture for us. abondante nous était offerte. So there were du bœuf, du poulet. Like tricks and trickery employed in certain Des cooperatives, and there were some mixed elements and bad elements. Car il y avait of course, mauvais éléments. There, there were always good elements Bien in sûr, the cooperatives. Bien sûr, il y avait toujours des bons éléments dans les coopératives. We tried to manage the situation Nous avons as essayé de a number of cooperatives la situation. had sufficient food to eat. While others did not, due to those bad elements. And that éléments. was the real situation. Voilà quelle était la situation réelle.
the Communist Party of Campuchia, le Parti communiste du Kampuchea, was formed in the society when it was formed in 1980. Was formed in the society where it was chaotic. Dans une société où régnait le chaos. It was not a party established cleanly from the heaven. Ce parti n'est pas tombé du ciel. Therefore, we strive to educate ourselves. Nous avons tenté strive to work, de nous instruire. Nous nous sommes efforcés to consolidate amongst ourselves the new and the old people, the 17 April people, de for example. Rassembler les anciens et les nouveaux, ceux du 17 avril. But we were still Mais destroyed by the bad nous elements. Avons été Anéanti par For example, les we instructed to screen Un good exemple. seedlings and seeds, but then the bad elements would only put the L'objectif bad and spoil seeds de for recueillir les meilleures graines as a result, mais les mauvais éléments choisissaient les mauvaises graines pour les recueillir et du coup the higher production. la productivité agricole n'était example. pas élevée ça c'est un exemple and that's what I saw while I inspected the base. j'en ai été témoin lorsque je me suis rendu so the management administration is a complicated issue it was not that easy for us at the time administrer un pays n'est pas chose aisée pour nous à l'époque c'était difficile and then we were accused that the par ailleurs Démocratie Kampuchea killed millions of people. But in fact, who actually killed the people? D'avoir tué un grand nombre de personnes. The Communist Party of Kampuchea is a patriotic party. Le Parti est un parti They sacrifice everything for the, part, for the nation and the people. Qui a tout sacrifié pour la nation so et pour le peuple. So that the people would have sufficient food to eat. In order to build a society afin de construire which is which shall have sufficient une société food au sein de laquelle chacun that aurait is assez not à manger mean plenty of food for the rich but sufficient food il for the pas poor who did not have pour sufficient food riches, in the past mais pour qu'il y ait assez à manger but the internal destruction occurred, both internal and external destruction, in particular in the East. Interne, of course, I don't blame everything on the Vietnamese. Je ne rejette pas toute la faute not sur many, les Vietnamiens, bien sûr. Not millions of Vietnamese in Cambodia, but there were hundreds of thousands Il of them pas des in de Vietnamiens au Cambodge, Cambodia. Mais des centaines de milliers d'entre eux. And after the Paris Agreement Et après with Vietnam, l'accord de Van Linh Paris made avec a le proposal Vietnam, to me Lint to send the Vietnamese people back to Vietnam de renvoyer les Vietnamiens so that they Vietnam could join in the election. Pour qu'ils puissent participer but aux élections. there were still Vietnamese Mais living il est resté in Cambodia des au Cambodge. in their plans to destroy the party, to destroy our independence, sovereignty and integrity. Le parti, l'indépendance, souveraineté et l'intégrité de notre pays. The situation that we suffered was also a result of the lines implemented by the Vietnamese in order to destroy us. Vietnam, en vue de nous anéantir. Their plan was not known Leur widely either in the country or at the international stage. Even China, China even mistaken that Vietnamese Même actually supported Kampuchea que le Vietnam soutenait le Until the secretary Cambodge. of the party went to explain to China and then they understood the situation. Pour donner des explications quant à la situation réelle. That's all, John. J'en ai terminé. Yes, thank you, Nguyen Chia. Uh, President, I have no further questions, uh, but I do have some documents I wish to place before the chamber, and perhaps that can be done after the break. Peut-être qu'on pourra le faire après l'interruption de l'audience. 
Thank you. Um, it is now Merci. appropriate to uh, take est venu an adjournment. So the uh, chambers would like to take a 20 minutes Pour recess and we will come back at 5 past 11. The security guards are instructed to bring the accused uh, to the holding cell uh, downstairs and bring them back to this uh, courtroom by 5 past 11. Thank you.